Have you ever consumed so much water that you puked? Yes, I have been... Overhydrated? I have been overhydrated before, and it is awful. I just came back from leave, and I had to pee in a cup to prove that I hadn't done drugs. Oh, yes, I remember this story. Yeah. Because you, you're very shy when it comes to urinating in public. I was very shy when it comes to urinating in public. <laughs> and I had to pee very badly, and all the drill sergeants were very angry that I wouldn't pee, or that I couldn't pee. For their urinary analysis test. For their pleasure. <laughs> they wanted to watch. And they wanted to watch me pee. That's how they get off. So I basically ended up drinking seven, eight gallons of water. Because they would tell you to pee in a cup, and you couldn't. So they'd force you to drink a bottle or two of water, and you couldn't still. So I'd drink more water, and I had drank so much water that I just started throwing up uncontrollably. The entire time, this one drill sergeant was running around the room with a baseball bat, breaking things and screaming, Private, if you don't pee right now, I'm going to cave your skull in and I'm going to fuck you to death. (laughs) It was probably the most horrifying experience of my entire life, and I'm including getting mortared. Oh, the things you'll see. I don't want to brag, but I do have sixth rank expert marksmanship. I I wait get... a minute. Expert marksmanship only goes to four ranks. No, it goes to six. What are you trying to pull? What are you talking about? I don't know how your army shooting works. Probably less than my effective Marine Corps shooting. It's, it's okay. You can wallow in your mediocrity by comparison. It's fine. Did you get sharpshooter? Oh, no. Or I... marksman? Oh, no. I did not get either of those. I got expert. I'm sorry, expert. Yes. I don't know if you have the same marksmanship Yes, Mike. Marking. I got expert every time. Did you get the pizza box? You got the pizza box, didn't you? No, I got expert marksman. You got the toilet seat. Actually, in basic training, I didn't get expert marksman, but that was because when we went to the final qualifying range, I went to tap the magazine to seat all the rounds properly in it, and the bottom of the magazine exploded outwards and the rounds (laughs) ruptured all over the place. So I basically was panicking trying to single-hand load my M16 on a course that requires the use of two fully loaded magazines. (laughs) I was also on the firing range, and I had an issue... I had 20 rounds in a magazine, and while I got to the firing range, I noticed that there was a live round on the ground, and I thought, oh no, one of my rounds must have fallen out. So I chambered that one, and then I shot at my target. It was a little weird that all the instructors were counting our shots, and I had 21 shots on mine. (laughs) I figured out the mathematical fucking equation to solve the lack of ammo. Yeah! I think there's something wrong with this gun. <laughs> it jammed a little bit? Yeah. If it jams, that's what you gotta do. You gotta push forward on that, what do you call it? The jam enhancer? The jam enhancer? I don't think that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I've used that once in my entire military career, and I have never used it since that day. I can't believe you found a use for it. Well, my entire rifle was completely filled with sand and dust. I never had that experience. Because some genius decided we were going to do a firing range in the middle of a sandstorm. Hooray! I was cleaning my rifle one time, and Uh I just couldn't figure out how to send the bolt home. And I told my fellow Marines sitting next to me, I said, I can't figure out how to send the bolt home. Look, I'm pushing the button, and it's not sending the bolt home. And he looked at me with this look of incredulity and said, that's because that's the magazine release button. Wow. So If I I had known that about you, I would have said that we can't be friends anymore. (laughs) While I was in the military and I lived in the barracks, we had a thing that was called Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers, or BOSS. It sounds like a dating meetup program. No, but it was supposed to help create fun events for people that lived in the barracks, so they didn't just sit in the barracks and drink all the time. It was like, oh, we're going to have this meeting out here, and there's going to be baseball and food and fun times, and there'll be people playing music. I and, love those days. Those are so fun. And you have to show up in civilian clothes. And also, we're having a formation afterwards, which you have to be in uniform for. That part's not so fun. I'm literally in the middle of work. I have 15 weapons that need to be fixed right now, but I have to go to this uh, mandatory fun day, so whoop de doo So I had to go back from work to the barracks, get changed into civilian clothes, go to this meeting, and they were like, oh, there will be food there. So I didn't eat lunch. <laughs> I know where this story's going. Was this your first mandatory fun day? Or were you aware of the procedure for that? Oh, I was aware of the procedure for Mandatory Fun Day. But usually when they said, there's going to be food there, there was food there that you didn't have to pay for. You say this isn't your first Mandatory Fun Day, but I think you would have learned by now to always have a can of SpaghettiOs or a packet of jerky. Because you know this kind of garbage happens all the time. So show up for the Mandatory Fun Day. They have hot dogs. 
Five dollars a pop. Yeah, which are five bucks a piece. For charity, right? No, it goes to the Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers thing, so that they can have more fun meetings like this. Eh, pretty much charity, but it's a terrible charity. It's a terrible charity that means that the sergeant who lives in the barracks and who runs the Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers thing can go frickin' skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I'm stuck sitting at the barracks getting drunk because I don't have anything else to do. Anyway, show up there. I have to pay like five bucks. I don't have any money. Then I have to go to a formation. So I have to go back to the barracks, get changed into my uniform, put on my black wool hat that I have to wear in the summer in mm. Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Where it feels like 120 degrees outside. I stand in formation for 10 minutes and then pass out because my blood sugar is too low. <laughs> this isn't a unique story for you, but it is. No, this happens to pretty much everybody in the military. Yeah. I wake up and my first sergeant and a medic are dragging me away from the formation. Did you get the silver bullet? No, I didn't. The medic that was dragging me back was not part of like an organized medical thing. He was just a medic that was standing in formation behind me. Oh, you're lucky they didn't have any thermometers on hand. Thank God. According to him, this is pretty much what happened. This is, this is bullshit. <laughs> I fell into the person in front of me and knocked him over. I wake up. My first sergeant and a medic are dragging me back. And my first sergeant is cussing me out and telling me that I have disgraced him and the entire unit because I passed out. Uh, the medic is telling the first sergeant that he needs to shut the fuck up because I just passed out, probably from low blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And also because it's 120 degrees outside. He's like, did you eat at all today? And I was like, no, I didn't eat. I went to the boss meeting. And he's like, you got to eat before those things, man. They charge you money. Because it wasn't his first rodeo either. Anyway, long story short, I passed out because the army said that there was going to be food there. And then there wasn't food there. Except there was food there, but I had to pay money for like it. Like they do every year. Yeah. Mandatory fun days are the worst. Oh, man. When we got sent to Africa, we got two guys that fell out of heat stroke the first day. Because they had to sleep under the frickin' 120 degree sun! Oh, that seems like a great idea. Don't worry, we had plastic tents to sleep in that had no ah, ventilation. Yes. They have no ventilation, so they just keep all the humidity and the moisture in there. Me and another guy had night shift, so we spent the entire night shift guarding the equipment. And then during the day, everyone else went out, and we got to sleep in the hot, hot sun. Oh, God. And it was already steaming hot at 9 in the morning. So I couldn't sleep. I'm naked and I'm still sweating, so we know what? Forget <laughs> it. I'm just going to put my gear back on and I'm just going to use my off time to play cards. Because there's nothing else I can do. Meanwhile, the other guy stayed in the tent for about 15 minutes and started getting delusional. <laughs> and he starts yelling, hey Mike, are you feeling hot? And of course, because I had left, he didn't hear anything. So he starts panicking, thinking maybe I had <laughs> passed out. So he jumps out of his tent in nothing but his boxer shorts. He starts ripping open tents because he can't remember which one I'm staying in, yelling, Mike! Mike, where are you? <laughs> Speak to me, Mike! <laughs> and we're not too far away, so we see the ruckus. We turn our heads, and we see this guy screaming and ripping into tents. <laughs> It sounds like a vision from a meth fueled nightmare. <laughs> like he was high on angel dust and was just ripping open tents trying to find you so that he could eat your organs. <laughs> well, thank God he couldn't find me. I was too busy playing caravan. Oh, God. Why were you in Africa? Oh, for training drills. Oh, okay. I wasn't deployed or anything. We are just hanging out with the Senegalese troops. And one of them kept making moves on our sergeant. Ah, uh, I remember you telling me about that. You can be my third wife. <laughs> Corporal Clegg, I present you with your purple heart. Wear it with honor. How's it going? Can I, now, now that we're talking to Corporal Clegg again, can I tell you a really quick funny story about when I was in the military? I love quick funny stories. Okay. We were doing like a redeployment ceremony, which is when you get back from Iraq, and they have a big ceremony that's supposed to be, as everybody in my chain of command said, well, this ceremony's for you guys. And then I kept thinking, why the hell do I got to stand in the hot Louisiana sun for three hours while some guy talks about shit that I know I did? While some guy fellates you in the hot sun? Yeah, pretty much. Do you have to practice for those? Yes, I had to practice for both of them. Because standing requires practice? Yeah, it was about two weeks of practicing for ceremonies. Anyway, at one of them, whenever we would practice, instead of the sergeant major giving his whole long-winded speech about... Everything that I know we did in, in country, mm -hmm. he would just stand up there and walk up to the microphone and say, remarks complete, and go and sit down. Because he didn't have to give the whole speech for the practice. 
They practice it at home, in the comfort of their house, in the comfort of air conditioning. Unlike me, because yeah. I'm a lowly soldier. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. During the actual deployment ceremony, he had said remarks complete so many times when he was called on stage that during the actual ceremony, he got up there, got behind the microphone, and said remarks complete, and then went and sat down. And then I could see him sitting on stage, and two seconds after he sat down, he realized what he did and just went, Oh, Fuck! <laughs> you didn't hear it. You saw him mouth it, though. Because <laughs> he didn't actually give the speech he was supposed to give, and they just kept going. That was the best redeployment ceremony ever, because it was about an hour shorter than it needed to be. <laughs> anyway, So, so uh, there was no fallout from that? No, not really. No, it's just a thing that happened. It's a sergeant major who's going to yell at him. 